I'm going to jump straight into an example because I'm going to start off with unconstrained optimization. Today's lecture nine is all about constrained optimization. And I just thought it would be best if we uh, made sure we had a little reminder of unconstrained first, which is what we did last week. So example one, we have a firm charges different prices, P1 and P2, for its domestic and foreign customers. The corresponding demand functions are P1 is equal to 700 minus Q1 and P2 is equal to 810 minus 2 Q2. The total cost function is TC is equal to 6,000 plus 30 Q, where Q is equal to Q1 plus Q2. Of note is that this is very similar to question seven from your homework for module eight. So determine the firm's pricing policy to maximize total profit with price discrimination. For part A, we want to find the prices at which profit will get maximized. So what we're going to do is we're going to create our profit function because we're looking to maximize profit. We want to optimize profit. So we need a profit function. So profit is going to be total revenue minus total cost. So for our revenue, what are we going to have here? We're going to have the amount that's sold in the domestic market times the price in the domestic market plus the price in the foreign market times the amount in the foreign market. So this becomes 700 minus Q1 times Q1 plus for P2 we had 810 minus 2Q2 times Q2. So this further can be foiled out to become 700Q1 minus Q1 squared plus 810 Q2 minus 2 Q2 squared. So there's my total revenue. And now for total cost, I was given this function right here, 6,000 plus 30 Q. But I need it to have the variables Q1 and Q2. So I'm going to recognize that Q in fact is Q1 plus Q2. So just substituting that in. So then foiling this out, I get 6,000 plus 30 Q1 plus 30 Q2. So now putting all this, all of this together to give me, give myself the profit function, I'm going to have total revenue minus total cost. My revenue function was 700 Q1 minus Q1 squared plus 810 Q2 minus 2 Q2 squared minus the cost equation 6,000 plus 30 Q1 plus 30 Q2. Now collecting all of my like terms, I have Q1 here and Q1 here. Let's not forget that this is getting subtracted. So it's going to be 700 minus 30 Q1. So 670 Q1 minus, there are no other Q1 squareds. For Q2, I've got a Q2 term here and a Q2 term here. Again, let's not forget that this is getting subtracted. So this is going to be 810 minus 30 or 780 Q2 minus 2 Q2 squared. And then I'm going to subtract this last term of 6,000. So there is my profit equation. So now I've got profit as a function of two variables. Profit is a function of Q1 and Q2. Are Q1 and Q2 constrained? Is there a limit to my Q1 and my Q2? No. There's no, there's no limit that we know of. Um, the natural one would be by demand. We would only want to price to a certain point. Um, but technically, there's no limit to Q1 and Q2 right now. 
So this is unconstrained optimization. So what's the first step to unconstrained two variable optimization? What's our first step? It's to get the first derivatives. So we want to get the first derivatives. And they're going to be partial derivatives because it's a two variable function. So the partial derivative with respect to Q1 first. So here is my Q1 term, and here's another Q1 term. So the partial derivative is going to be what? That's right. So first I do the derivative of 670Q1, and that's going to be 670. And then I do the derivative of minus Q1 squared, which will be minus 2Q1. And then the rest of the terms don't have Q1s in them, so the derivatives are 0. And then I'm going to do my other partial derivative with respect to Q2. So I have a Q2 term here, and I have a Q2 term here. So what does the derivative here become? That's right. So the derivative of 780Q2 is going to be 780. And then the derivative of minus 2Q2 squared is going to be minus 4Q2. So there are my two first derivatives. What's the next step to my unconstrained optimization? Step two is I'm going to set the partials to be equal to zero and solve for my variables. So I'm going to solve for what I get. So I'm going to move 2q1 over to the other side. I have 670 is equal to 2q1. So both sides, I'm going to divide by 2 to isolate q1. I get q1 is equal to 335. For the second equation, I'm going to move 4q2 to the other side of the equation. I get 780 is equal to 4q2. Dividing both sides by 4, I get q2 is equal to 195. So now I've solved for my q1 and my q2 values. What's the next step? to doing my unconstrained optimization. I've got Q values for my critical point, but we want to prove that this is actually a maximum, not a minimum, not a saddle point. So if I want to do that proof, I'm going to get the second derivatives. So first I'm going to get the second derivative, Q1, Q1. So that's taking our first derivative here, and doing the derivative with respect to Q1. So what's that going to be? What's the derivative of 670 minus 2Q1 with respect to Q1? That's right, there's only one Q1 term here. So the derivative of that with respect to Q1 is gonna be negative two. Next, I'm going to do the second derivative Q2, Q2. So I'm gonna take my first derivative with respect to Q2, and I'm going to do the derivative with respect to Q2. So this is going to give me what? This is going to be minus 4. There's only one Q term, Q2 term here. The derivative is minus 4. And then I'm going to do the partial derivative Q1, Q2. Let's take this one right here. This was, first derivative was with respect to Q1, so I'm doing the derivative with respect to Q2 now. What's the derivative of that with respect to Q2? That's right, the derivative of this is going to be zero. There are no Q2 two terms here. So the derivative is going to be zero. Okay, now I'm going to do my second derivative test. So to do that, I'm gonna start by looking to see if it's a saddle point. So I take the second derivative Q1, Q1, times the second derivative with respect to Q2 and Q2, minus, the second derivative with respect to both q1 and q2 squared. And this gives me negative 2 times negative 4 minus 0 squared for positive 8. So now how do I interpret that? If my function here is positive, what does that imply? It implies that it's not a saddle. So now that I know it's not a saddle, I need to examine whether it's a max or a min. So I go back and I look at my two derivatives here. These values, are they positive 
or are they negative? So these values are both negative. So it's a sad face. The critical point is where that slope would be zero there, so that would be a maximum. And there's my proof that it's a maximum, the second derivative test. Okay, so now we know the Q1 and the Q2 values, but what we wanted to get was the pricing policy. What prices do we want? So I have to take these values of Q1 and Q2 that correspond to a maximum profit, and I have to plug them back into their price equations. So I have the price equations back here, just so you know where I'm getting these equations from. I'm gonna be taking those price equations. So P1 was equal to 700 minus Q1. My Q1 value is 335, my optimal Q1 value. So this is gonna give me $365. Three thirty-five was the critical Q1 value, that's right. And it corresponded to the maximum profit. Now our P2 equation was 810 minus 2 Q2. So 810 minus my critical Q2 value, my maximum Q2 value of two times 195. And that is going to give me $420. So now I have the two prices for the domestic market. I would price at $365. For the foreign market, I'd price at $420 to maximize my profit.